All right, you guys, so I hit the record button about eight minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> Which is perfectly fine because I'm going to go ahead and do the spiel and talk us into this thing. Okay. So, hello, everybody. My name is Thomas Zachary. This is an episode of the KAAMP, the Knox Area Artist Networking Platform. And uh, today we got some cool cats in the room. We're going to have a fun conversation. And uh, please introduce yourself. Well, my name's Travis Christian, but uh, artist wise, you're going to have to look up Weeping Cosmonaut. Uh, it's a stage name I go by. Uh, I'm a musician from Texas. Moved to Tennessee originally to Nashville uh, with a group of guys. Unfortunately, though, things fell apart and I tried to pick things back up solo. And shortly after the pandemic hit, so that even put a big stop into production and creating and playing. But um, the, pan the pandemic, like, coming out of it, I'm hoping to have... A lot of good material to release. I'm gonna have two songs released this Halloween. Um, sometime in November uh, will be another single release, and I'm also working on an actual Christmas song for the upcoming holidays. Hey yo, <laughs> yeah, Christmas dude, songs. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm new to Knoxville. I moved to Knoxville during the pandemic. Uh, talked my fiance Powell into jumping up here with me. It's all his fault. It is. <laughs> it, yeah. It was like, hey, let's move to Knoxville. I'm like, I've never been to Knoxville, but okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We ended up having to move within two weeks. We had two weeks to move. <laughs> and I got a job, like, right oh, away. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was fucking ass to elbow for <laughs> two crazy. weeks. We moved in the house here, 4th of July. Like, 4th of July night, they're popping fireworks off in the park, <laughs> and we're unpacking this new house <laughs> Like, yeah. holy sh welcome to Knoxville. And my birthday's on the 5th. So oh, it nice. was like, that's how I spent my birthday, was moving into this new city. Well, that's a, that's quite like a time stamp <laughs> in, in your memory there. Birthday, sure. new things, fireworks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a buddy up here. His name's Mike Nelson. He runs a music studio here called Park Ridge Recording. He's in um, the Old City, Park Ridge area, uh, on that side of town. Um, I've been working with him even when I was in the band that unfortunately split that I was mentioning. Uh, he helped us release our debut EP, and when I went solo, he helped me with my two um, first singles and then my EP project, Bloody Truth, that was released last year during the pandemic. But now with everything coming up, like I was mentioning, I'm going to start lining up shows and hopefully play the area. I want to make it out to Asheville, explore this region up here. I mean, I did a lot of shows and playing in the state of Texas, and I played a lot in Nashville with the guys. But I'm new to the area. I wanted to leave the city during the pandemic and like get closer to nature. And Mike was here as a plus, so I mean, it all worked out. It made sense. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, you can drive 30 minutes in any direction from Knoxville and be in the middle of the woods. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. So, I'm glad you touched on the pandemic shenanigans. It's not like we can really avoid it a whole lot. But um, one of the things I like to ask people is, what's it like being a creative person here now for you? Oh, man. It's like I hit the redo or restart button. Like, I'm starting from scratch and just, like, learning the techniques and what they did have to offer because a lot of the shows and musicians they capitalize on like live streaming and everything um like just working on new products so they could release it when the pandemic was up and that's what i tried to focus on was just hammering out new uh material so i have something to release now uh and like i said i mean it was a straight restart. When the guys and me split, it was just a big pause. I took like six months off and went back home. I'm like, nah, I probably won't go back to Tennessee. But I decided to come back to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've lived in Knoxville for a decade. It's a, it's a very unique place. I feel like a lot of people say that about wherever they are. But Knoxville's a really fun place with a really good creative scene. It's I feel like it's a little under under recognized i think so too and i'm ready to hop into it and hope to promote it and help out in any way that i can um i mean that's one thing i'm trying to figure out now is like venues out here like nice ones i could contact and try to land and book a gig. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there's there's not a shortage of stages to be on in this place. I yeah. swear, <laughs> there's really not. I mean, you can probably be, you know, drive 15 minutes from one to another, mostly up and down Kingston Pike and then into downtown. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Man, in our location, I mean, we lucked out with a, a pretty decent house in the West Hills area. Like, we're yeah, that's not far. <laughs> we're, like, we're we're technically like three blocks, three blocks away from the mall. Yeah, that's a good spot. That's a real that's a really desirable spot. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, I've we've drove up and down Kingston plenty of times. I mean, that's where all the major shops and stuff are at. So, we I've seen so many bars that are doing live music, and it's just me needing to contact them and get my name out here because I mean I'm known back in Texas but that doesn't help me here I mean I can promote my Spotify and everything and during the pandemic I was trying to capitalize on live streams and still staying in contact or having some type of social media presence yeah. but at the same time I'm like I need to create new stuff for when we get out of this thing I get the ball rolling and I mean just try to capitalize get ahead. yeah like the the time and energy investment into appropriate things. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people adjusted those priorities, you oh, know, yeah, <laughs> sure. during this period for sure. Um, I was I was home for six weeks during a lot of this mess, and uh, I just woke up and painted every day, because you know what am I gonna do? Like I, I I have my son every other weekend, so if I don't if I don't have anything to do with him, I'm probably just. Uh, paint in my studio till right. I'm hungry or have a headache and then I'm like oh god I'm a human I need to like drink water and yeah. stuff <laughs> damn it I was in the groove and then my tummy rumbled and it's just like nah dude go eat you're done <laughs> yeah it's terrible but you know it's good to be reminded because I forgot obviously <laughs> so man um you play music. Are you into any other mediums, tangible things, uh, drawing, painting, sculpting, uh, poetry? Well, I mean, I've always wrote, like, even as a little kid. Like, I like to write. I used to, like, write a lot of poetry back in, like, middle school, junior high. And then I was like, let me actually start trying to put music to this or not just read it, but, like, try to sing to it. And that's when my, like, love for songwriting came about. And, I mean, after high school, I mean, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be some rock star or pursue it. I mean, I sung in choir, and I wrote a lot, but <clears throat> I joined the Army after high school. Like, my whole idea was I was going to be some baseball player and go get my, like, that's how I was going to, it was either a scholarship to college or Army, and then eventually college, because I couldn't afford it. Like, my family, we were, we weren't dirt poor but we weren't rich yeah so i mean middle class is a tough place to be sometimes yes it really <laughs> is man yeah but i mean i i joined the military and like i served for five years so when i got out i was dealing with shit that i had uh, experienced or went through while in service and then just trying to figure out what do i do now and like i coped with a lot of different things so alcohol and numerous I mean fucking cocaine a shit ton of thought I mean crack I've smoked crack I hated it I've shot up I've got a tattoo to cover up a scar like it was bad for a while and like that's when I actually dove into music I like gave it my all like like you're like I would lock myself in a room and just fucking start writing, trying to find a melody, trying to compose some type of music to the words I had written out. And like you were talking, like I'd have to be reminded to like get up, go yeah. to the bathroom, go drink water, go just, pee, go to sleep, <laughs> and come back fresh. Like, I, like late, late, late nights, early mornings. Mm, yeah. I've seen so many sunrises. <laughs> so many. But, hey, uh, you ain't going to see the sunrise unless you stay up all night. So, like... Man, yeah. It's a, that's a double-edged sword there, but damn, sun, sunrises are awesome. They are so awesome. So, how, how long have you been writing your own material, writing songs in general? Well, I got out of the military in 2012. Oh, correct. Uh, 2011. Um, 
did college for two years at Wiley College in an East town, uh, East Texas town called Marshall, Texas. Um, like I f during junior high, I was in band, but I played uh, clarinet for the longest fucking time. But like when I got out, I was like, I need to pick up an instrument and try to do this songwriting for real because I'm not real tech savvy. So I, I didn't see myself being some producer and getting on a computer and making or composing things that way. So I picked the ukulele up at first and self-taught myself through YouTube and freaking uh, books from Guitar Center Online, what et cetera. Um, after the ukulele, guitar got picked up real quick. Um, I pick a little bit on the banjo and mandolin. My my dad bought me a mandolin because he's a big bluegrass fan. Same. Yeah. yeah. My dad's also a giant bluegrass fan. He's like, if you can play the ukulele, you can play the mandolin. Sure. Hey, Dad. Sure. That's how that works. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I love you. <laughs> Here, have fun. Don't hate yourself. Like. Oh. Oh my God. That's that's almost cruel. <laughs> right. Oh, but man, I've been writing since two thousand and I mean, like I've been writing my whole life, but music-wise, with my own art, pushing it um, since two thousand twelve. So, coming up on that sweet decade. Yeah. That's a that's a serious consistent effort. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And like I feel you have to if you take too long of a pause or step back, like there's other people that are they're trying to get to where you're at or catch up to it. So they're going through their process. Like everybody wants to be some type of rock star. I mean, I love the art. Music is great, but there is so much competition. Yeah. But that's the beauty in it too because all these people, like, you can listen, you can learn from, take notes for Like, I just wish I had the opportunity to create a new note because <laughs> copyright <laughs> is crazy. And I heard a, I heard it on the radio today. We were running out with errands, or doing errands, and Avril Lavigne, her freaking song. Girlfriend. Hey, yeah, girlfriend, right? She, that was like her number one after like her band band broke up because it was like her solo push and freaking she got sued by the ramones because apparently the ramones had a song hey hey will you be my boyfriend and they played the similarities and they had a, a musicologist i think that's what the, yeah yeah compare the songs and apparently he didn't hear no similarities but she lost all those royalties to her song because it was too much. Uh, too similar. Yeah, and when you go mainstream, it's it's a lot of the four chords, same progression, sort of. The body of the song's the same. You'd either have an intro or verse one, and then a chorus, verse two, maybe an interlude or bridge, or slap in a chorus repeated. Like, there's... There's a formula right. to this thing, and I try to challenge myself and pursue elsewhere. Like recently, um, I picked up the keys, finally, after 12 years. Like I jumped off strings and wanted to... Because every time I play the ukulele... Meow, meow, kitty. <laughs> yeah, she'll be over here in somebody's lap in a minute. I told Man. you. <laughs> I told you. But like when I, when I went... In 2012, I decided that I was going to pick up the ukulele. Like, I learned it, and my original stuff that I was going out and doing open mics and landing little coffee shop gigs was reggae pop, or just reggae. I was a reggae artist called Trabby Vibes. Crabby Vibes? <laughs> Trabby. Trabby Vibes. Trabby Vibes. Okay. I was like, Crabby Vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa. But, I mean, I played a lot in Northeast Louisiana. I played all up down I-20. Dude, from... what's the reggae coffee shop scene like in Northern Louisiana? Let me tell you, man. <laughs> I, I didn't know I needed to ask that, but here we are. <laughs> the crowd, uh, they do love the genre down there to some sort of extent, but... I didn't get to play a lot of nice venues okay. because I didn't play the right genre. Like, it would have been a lot of covers. I mean, in Northeast Louisiana, that, I mean, it's big country land out there. So mm -hmm. country, Christian rock, uh, some rock, like, that's your main. But, like, if you're trying to go, like, mainstream or somewhere, you probably want to get to a bigger uh, metropolitan area and push it there. So 
I left the East Texas town and did my thing in Dallas and shit. I played from Dallas to San Antonio to Austin, uh, fucking, what's up there? <laughs> Amarillo, down to Houston, South Padre Island. Now, South Padre Island, that was probably one of my favorite reggae shows. I mean, they had girls, like, just throwing, they were laying on um, freaking, like, Indian-style rugs, rolling joints, listening to me play. And they would roll up too. They'd light one up and throw one up on stage. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, How can you not? That I would have to enjoy that. Like I'm required to have fun in this scenario right now. I, would, like, I wouldn't fight it. Yeah, and like in my early times, like that was the first stuff I was pushing and letting the whole world hear. And like the funnest thing about just me and a ukulele on stage, and the, probably the funniest gig I've ever had. So I made friends down in Deep Ellum, uh, and that's a, the downtown scene in Dallas. And these metal guys were throwing this huge show from like 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. Like they're gonna have so, they're gonna have like a hundred acts just play all day long. And it was a metal alt rock festival, but <laughs> I was like the fourth or fifth uh, in lineup, and everyone's played freaking death metal fucking screaming like you heavy guitars freaking people wearing masks they had like a gimmick sort of like slipknot or core and like and i just come out with my ukulele all right guys this is jason moraz but i'm yours like <laughs> so, uh, like that was probably like, the... uh, hi everybody <laughs> hi everybody my name's travis i had a cardigan on and everything like, you're shitting me i i'm not Oh. I'm not shitting you. <laughs> I was 20 at that time. Yeah, I was 24, 23. I'm like buttoned up freaking shirt with a cardigan on. With so, some so, cat, like so uh, let, some pretty but, boy shit. Let me get this straight. Nobody pulled you aside and was like, hey, dude, what are you doing here? Uh, like, numerous times. Oh, okay, okay. And when I told them that I was a musician to play here, they were like, you? Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna be cool. Who's in charge of this thing? <laughs> They're like, you do metal? Like I didn't say no. <laughs> I mean I just didn't say I yes. I didn't say yes either. <laughs> oh man. So how did that show go? Please please tell me. Man, I did forty five minute set. Um it was mainly for exposure, but I got to have to book it out just like every other act did. I I mean Deep LM and Twin Dallas Metal Fest. I mean, Dallas has a great metal or alt rock scene, so they were very generous to me. And that was my nickname the whole night was Pretty Boy. Uh oh. Because <laughs> I, should you not, I look like motherfucker from The Notebook. Like, <laughs> buttoned up shirt with a fucking Bill C or friggin' <laughs> Mr. Rogers type of sweater <laughs> with khakis. Dude. And some bands. <laughs> Some uh, neon yellow vans. What are you doing to yourself? <laughs> and I had plugs in, and then had my shit. My hair was a lot shorter, like a comb over with the part. Like I was some weird white boy. Uh, and I, mean, I like, screamed white privilege then. Did Did you like walk out of there without a beer bottle thrown at you, or? I did, that was the these people like. Everyone's like, why are you going to go to a metal show and go to the mosh pit and scream and elbow? You may fall over and get stuck. Like, but those people, those fans are like the nicest, coolest, humble people. They they just yeah. love different style of music. Yeah. But like <laughs> listening to those bands, like pushed me out to like, okay, this ukulele guitar solo thing's cool, but be awesome if I had a lead guitarist and a bassist and a drummer with me. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go back home and then I'm going to go back home just for two or three months, save up, and I'm going to flip heads. Heads, Colorado. I was going to go to Denver or go to Nashville. I wanted to go to New York City or Los Angeles, but I'm like, that's probably setting me up for failure. That's a big pool out there, big pond, big fishes. Like I did, I was very uncertain. So I mean, Denver and Nashville, the real estate prices are about the same. They, now they are, man. Nashville is the fastest growing city in America. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I'm like, gee, yeah, it's it's 
It's moving and shaking for sure. Uh, I try to drive around it anytime I have to go west. Man, I drive through. I lived in it, but like I drive through it every time going home. I forty all the way to the Memphis Bridge, all the way to Little Rock. Get Texarkana and make a left. <laughs> <laughs> Follow signs to Houston, you'll get off at Marshall. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. That's great. <laughs> but dude, yeah, man, I left Dallas <laughs> and fucking got back home to uh, Marshall. All I did was work, fucking try to write. I was living with my buddy Josh. Uh, and I want to do some shout outs to Josh's because I know five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's and go. they all live in the same vicinity so my buddy he's one of my best friends Army Josh, Josh Hollinshead we call him Army Josh he's a crazy, wild, beautiful hunky of a man I tell you dude he's freaking <laughs> easy. so when I was in the military I was in the airborne division I jumped out of airplanes his job was a parachute rigger so he we didn't go to this, we weren't in the army or at the same base at the same time. Like, we met after we both were out, but he was <laughs> the one packing my chutes and, like, making sure they open and... Made sure you didn't die. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, we got along <laughs> real tight. And then, so, we've got Country Josh next. Mm. He has goats. He has goats. He's a big old, he's a great guy. I can count on him anytime, like... If he's got money, if I need it, I got you, bro. You need a place to stay, I got you, bro. Like, he's the nicest guy I've ever met. Um, he's a big roughneck. He's working on pipelines and oil rigs and stuff. Yeah. So. so. Gnarly. <laughs> and then I made a, a great friend in um, Dallas, in Asian Josh. <laughs> he's Korean. Um, he helped me pick out a ukulele. He helped me get into the scene down there, playing local shops, and then actually getting into the music scene in Deep Ellum and Fort Worth, Denton in between. Um, after Asian Josh, I got Black Josh. And like I, I was in school after the Army at Wiley College, and that's a historical black university. It's the home of the great debaters. There was a movie that Denzel Washington portrayed. Uh, their teacher and professor and uh, that was released a couple years back um i picked up music there heavily and did a lot of spoken word and poetry i made great friends shout out to austin dean ashford if y'all haven't heard him y'all should check him out for sure yeah uh, great guy he writes his own material he's just got off tour he's played all over the world He's going to be doing music for um, a lot of, what is it, the, I think it's Blackish or? Grownish. Grownish? I think it's Grownish. Grownish. He's going to be doing a lot of music for them soon um, and making some like headway as uh, an actor and not just a singer and writer. Um, man, yeah, I've made a lot of beautiful connections through the military and doing this whole music thing, jumping all over the state of Texas and touring the East Coast. So, I've had a fun the whole time, but I don't know where I was going with that. I think you still have one Josh left. Oh, man. Army Josh, Country Josh. Asian Josh, Black Josh. Oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> Spanish Josh. His mom's white his dad's Dominican. <laughs> I'm sorry, Josh. Now, this just has to be the best shout out. That's, Lo that's all. Lo siento, <laughs> amigo. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so he helped me out through the military. He's one of my best friends. Like, I don't, he's in Atlanta right now. Once he got out of the military, he went to technician school and he's working on, like, he does interior work on cars, customization, and stuff like that. <laughs> sorry, dude. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's pretty badass. <coughs> Automotive stuff. I get really geeky about. I hate automotive stuff. <laughs> my dad, my dad, I wrote a song about my dad, and in one of the lyrics, it's like, if you could see his hands, you'd understand. 
like he's just got them big man hands and like his skin's all crazy. He's a big boy. He's worked in fields. He's worked in shops. He can fix anything that's got a motor on it. Like he's the all around handyman. He's great. Gnarly ass hands. Gnarly ass hands. You shake him. You better be. You make it get cut. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the weight softly. <laughs> Yeah, my dad's kind of the same way. Like he's just got them. Like he's he's like old man strong, and just you know, yeah, and got big old hands. So like, and they and he does a lot of shit with his hands. So they're just you know, they're calloused and stuff. Yeah, he goes in for the handshake. You better be ready. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. So, wrote a song about your dad. Do you have any other inspirations you like to pull from? Uh, when you're writing music, are there any topics or themes you like to play with? Or is it I, just free-for-all, whatever? I've got a little bit of everything, but, like, for the past two or three, like, during reggae, during the mainstream pop that I was trying to do, and when I found the group of guys and we were doing that Lumineers-type style or Coldplay-style, Maroon 5-style type of band play, like... It was all like songs like to make you feel good or like inspirational, like happy songs or something. Um, and lately it's been, most of these songs have been about me and like experiences in my life. Like, cause I've got a shit ton to talk about. <laughs> and so like, I'm, I'm thinking long run, it's going to be almost like a audio book. Like it's just going to be songs. And like I'm gonna do like a chronicles because I mean, my life to me is interesting, and I hope I could sell it enough to make it interesting to others. I mean, I've got a lot of I learned a lot of life lessons the hard way, but the stories are pretty pretty awesome, man. <laughs> so I figured I'm gonna just open up a lot more, and like after going through. Um, alcohol rehab and like getting over hard like cocaine addiction and everything like marijuana and other psychedelics I guess are a big factor in about four or five of my songs um I don't have to be drunk or high to write a decent song or one that I think may be decent or it sounds good to the ear but like when I uh give myself up to these drugs or just like relax and just let go a lot of crazy and insane beautiful crazy shit happens and i capitalize on that <laughs> i do i do well there you go if, if is, is that part of your workflow it's, it's workflow it's, that's the workflow yeah uh, on, sure. on occasion allegedly quote quote <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's, that's four or five songs you said. What are some other things that have uh, found their way into your music? Maybe things that aren't, like, uh, your personal experiences. Do you have any, like, concept songs or things that are just fun about ideas? I've got this one right now, um, and it's referring to, like, Wronger. It's going to be a pretty political song. It's, uh, about, it's called Wronger, right? Um... And the title, I mean, it's, you're wrong or right, but like with everything that's been going on since the pandemic and even before then with like Black Lives Matter movement, like it was a big impact on me because I, I mean, I went to a couple protests as well when I was in Nashville. I was not there when they lit the courthouse on fire, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted to speak up about what I saw on TV every time I freaking turned it on or get on Facebook like you couldn't avoid some type of negativity and like with this counts this cancel culture going on like everybody is perceived like half of them is gonna say you're wrong the other half's gonna say you're right and I'm just from like now on like the whole thing to me was calling that stuff out and talking about how history has been repeating itself because you're supposed to learn from your mistakes, but I don't think we've learned much if things are just repeating. It feels like it's 1969, like it's it's still crazy. 
just in a different way. And I, I was trying to, uh, I really wanted to do something political because I usually try to stay away from that stuff and keep my opinion to myself. But if you were on my Facebook, you would say differently. <laughs> I post some, I'm like GIF meme king. GIF <laughs> king. Jif meme king. <laughs> uh, as long as you don't say it with a soft G, we're fine. Or a hard G, yeah, no. Hard G. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't like. I don't agree with the guy that created it. I'm, I'm off on the other end of this debate. Yeah. It's not a GIF. It's a GIF. GIF. What do you say? No. I have, so my first language is Spanish, so especially G words make no sense to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I caught her. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that word. Like when something's really, really big. Gigantic. I cannot say that word for like the life of me. It's I. The G's make no sense. In the English language. Giraffe. So, I, I try, I won't say GIF or GIF. Fairy. I'm just like, oh, the little picture kind of thing. You know, like, I just, there's certain words that I won't say, and that's one of them, so I have really Guilty. no opinion on that. Oh. Well, that's an interesting way to live your life. I really, I, I've never thought about that. And, yeah, it's just, English makes no sense. Um, it, it's... It's weird. You know, with Spanish, it's the way that you spell it. That's the way you say it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Here, like, with, how do you say it again? One said really big. Gigantic. 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 Gig <laughs> See, I, for the longest time, would just say, like, Don't oh, it's gigantic. Don't ask a boy from Texas. And I'm like, okay. And then I would get corrected all the time because they're like, the two Gs are different. It's not gigantic. Giraffe. Gig Gary. No, but that only has one G. Good. Gary. Anyways, so right. that the English language and words with G insert other words I just avoid. Oh, like Huda. <laughs> That's uh, my two cents on the English language. Mm. It gets my silver approval stamped, certified, <laughs> some bullshit English. It makes no sense. I ain't gonna speak up for it. At all, because you know I'm subject to this ridiculousness as well. <clears throat> so you know it is what it is. I'll be damned. <laughs> mm. So, are there any projects you got in the works right now? Any uh, works in progress? Things about to come out? Things you're just toiling with in the back of your brain? Well, man, yes. Um, I've got two songs coming out uh, on Halloween. Um, it's actually going to be a remaster and re-release of my debut single, Don't Count Me Out, but on all platforms that are able, it's not just going to, it's not just remixed, but we're going to, me and my uh, producer and engineer Mike from Park Ridge Recording, um, we're going to give a Dolby Atmos version to it. Uh, Apple Music has that on their playlist now it's a different it's a new and upcoming type of sound yeah how to release stuff out so we're gonna release our first dolby mix on halloween as well of a as well as a cover of yellow card oceans avenue all right i stripped it down heavily i i wanted to because when i play it in my head or when i've played it at shows like it's always similar to how they recorded and released it. But like after getting on YouTube and researching other people that have covered it and like how many views they've got or how can I make it different so it's not the same cover of a cover of this main song. So like I've stripped it down really, it's really raw. It's me and a piano for the most part. Um, and like I said, I've got Wrong or Right coming out and um, November, and that's the song I was mentioning about just people just thinking wrong or right, and just like the cancel culture and just all those riots and protests that were going on, the pandemic and how it was handled, like all of that was playing in my head when I wrote it. And like, um, I'm gonna release a new or a cover of a 
an old fashioned Christmas song. I'm not gonna say which one. It's gonna be funny. It's gonna be fun. Um, I don't even know. Oh, yeah. so it's still oh, it's, it's legit. Guess, still a secret. If y'all can it's guess the Christmas song, I may say that's it. I don't know, cause when we were talking about it, it was like really dumb kitty kind of songs. Like, <sighs> no. <laughs> I won't. No, no. What is it? It's. I don't know the name of it. Just start. Think like super cheesy, old school, like little kids kind of singing type of Christmas song. Was it a choir of children? Negative. <laughs> I, I don't want to tread too far what into this. That? I might discover it. What's that song with the little girl that she loses her two front teeth? Isn't it something like that? Oh, man. You're not really close. <laughs> but anyways, Christmas songs out in Christmas. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up 2022 with a song that I have played different. I've recorded it twice in very different versions because when I wrote it, I thought it was going to be a very deep song and I wanted to keep it really solo just like me and a guitar me and the ukulele and then me and a group of guys formed this little project called tame the lion and we uploaded it and used it for our submission of this year's uh npr tiny disc contest uh we didn't win but um recorded it that way with the bass, drums, synthesizer, so it had a whole different vibe of the stripped down version. And now me and my buddy Mike, I think we figured it out. And it's gonna have a great, it's gonna be a little punk rock, a little, it's gonna be a little Cage the Elephant, a little bit Killers, old school Incubus, some 41 like bullshit. It's gonna be, I, I like it. It's, it's a little bit, of all of those references. <laughs> so the bullshit was a technical term. Yeah. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Excellent. That's the genre. Oh. <laughs> That's the part that would be in quotation marks, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that one's going to be called Trip. And yes, I'm referring to Trip Inc. Um, but I go a little... Like, I hope people catch the metaphors I release. I don't want to talk much about it because I really want that one to be... A big surprise, but I just did tell y'all that it's released on YouTube for NPR purposes. You can listen to that version. Um, and then after, shortly after that, I've written two new songs on the piano that I got this year for my birthday. It's an actual upright grand piano that she is heavy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but it's in my garage, and like I got it, and... <laughs> no, I got it. I've been playing on it every damn day. I slightly regret getting it. Ooh, that. at least it's not a drum kit. That's true. <laughs> I would fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but piano, it's like that's the trade-off. Like, <laughs> but me writing all these songs on the piano. When I start gigging, and if I want to perform these songs, I'm not, not carrying this 800-pound piano downtown or nah. up this mountain here. <laughs> I need to invest in a, in a pretty decent keyboard. So if anyone hears this and wants to buy me an awesome keyboard for Christmas, <laughs> you can find me on Facebook and other platforms underneath Weeping Cosmonauts. <laughs> Y'all heard him. <laughs> You heard him. It's either a keyboard or... I want a hippopotamus for Chris. That's the song I'm thinking about. <laughs> but no, seriously, I would love a hippopotamus. Um, I only... I, man, it's like... That's when you have a, a teacup pig. Like that, a little that, micro pig. That shit ain't gonna stay... No, Jeez. no, listen. That shit ain't gonna stay... So no, listen. Here's the thing. They don't stay tiny like that forever. In like four years, you got a 150 pound pig that's like, oh, I used to be cute. Hey, and then it's running around pooping everywhere. Bacon and pork chops and Ooh. a pork one. Man, if we feed them good, it'll taste good. It's food chain. No. Okay. Dang. 
if I'm I giving took a it dark love, love. We yeah. talked about pet That's also why it would taste better. Because I gave it love. Yeah, it was raised yes. with love. I would I wouldn't be able to eat it. I would just cry. Well, I mean that's okay. <laughs> it's no. It is. My uh, my grandmother used to do that. Oh no, our pet turkey. We ate them for Christmas. So yes, I will not do. Oh, so sad. <laughs> so what was your mom's reaction when when you called her out about the turkey? Oh, she she was just like, mm, it happens. Like, <laughs> it, it's kind of the it, same thing. It happens. Oh, it's it's the food chain. It's what did you think we we're gonna keep a turkey <laughs> as a pet? Like I just, maybe I don't know. We had it for like two months. It's like is this thing staying? I thought it was staying. <laughs> it was, yeah. We should I get ostriches. Know. Oh, what about ostrich? Thing ostrich. So weird. Just a half? Like an empty one? Just a shell? <laughs> I've seen Gordon Ramsay show. He cracked a freaking ostrich egg and cooked it. It was like the biggest egg I've ever seen in my life. Because an ostrich egg equals one dozen chicken eggs. My God. It's too much. But I want one. You want a lot of that? You want chickens and quails and. Quails? You want to hear that quail noise all the time? Yeah, he will do, like, cause you know they ain't gonna be quiet. I want some guineas. I would rather have guineas. I would rather have guineas. I really would. I think they're, they're way cuter than the quails, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Well, and they, they look goofy as hell. Something you'd see like running around with wily coyote or some shit, just like. Yeah. Like growing up, me and my brother, we were from a we. Well, I was born in Texas, raised in Louisiana, but we, uh, the, I stayed, we moved around a lot, but when my freshman year, we stayed where my dad's originally from, Simsboro, Louisiana, and I told him to stop moving so I could finish high school in one school. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it's a little small town, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade in one building. Ooh. My graduating class was, I think, 32 or 34 people. Holy shit, you want... Oh, I beat you. My high school class was four of us. Wow. All right, well, how many stoplights did you have? Because that's the next thing I'm going to ask. How oh. many what? Stoplights. Like, oh, me? I, we either. Didn't either no, one. We didn't have no stoplights, but we did have two yeah. sh shot, two flashing yellows. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. So... I'm usually the person in the room that graduated high school with the smallest class, and there were 85 people in my class. So hearing both of y'all say that shit just blew my mind a little bit. We didn't even have a football team. No football. Well, we didn't have anything. No football. Out of like four, because it was four four people in graduating class. One of them was my cousin. So like half of the graduating class was family. Yeah. So are you saying that was used to your advantage? Or is it just the odds of the room? It <laughs> could be my advantage. <laughs> like if it was and you don't want to own up to it right now, it's not the time to say it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I have no shame. None. Mm -mm. <laughs> no so how many people were in the school total if your class was four? Okay, so I should probably go back and say No, just, just leave it that... out. <laughs> yeah. No context. Well, okay, no context. Um, I believe it was like low 50s in the entire school, and we were like a... So, uh, Pre-K? Kindergarten? I don't know. Like a K through 12 kind of thing. Okay. Um... It was a tiny school, yeah. Okay, now context. Context. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up having to move back to Colombia, where I'm from, for high school. And one of my aunts has an inclusion school over there. So it's the majority, or it's kind of changed a bit. But when I went to school, the majority of the school had some type of disability. Um, or just behavioral problems or kind of couldn't go into another school. And then you had your typical kids. And... 
So I was one of the kind of few typical kids. And so because of the structure and how it was supposed to be, the school was pretty small because of that. Yeah. Um, so it, it, and it was my aunt's school, which is why two of the four graduating were family members. Oh, let me so, go back and work for them. I'll teach music in English. She told you you could. Hey. You have a job over there. Well, yeah. I gotta be paid in American dollars instead yeah, of that's not gonna sense. happen. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why like it was such a small school. Just like I think this year she said uh, they're like at eighty five kids. Oh wow! Well. So uh, I had a similar situation growing up. My grandfather was my high school principal. Oh, oh, shit. And my middle school principal till I was a senior. Damn. Wow. Yeah, it was funny. I tell you. Um, my my papa was a pretty cool dude. But he would pull me out of class sometimes. Let me go uh, like count the drawers for the uh, concession stand, or tell me to go pick up trash off the roof. Damn. And just pull me out of class, but like, hey, we're gonna go up on the roof and pick up trash. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. All right, so like bottles and cans full of dip spit, you know, whatever <laughs> people had thrown up there. <laughs> like, yeah, we, you know, we'd be carrying one of them little like grabby sticks with the forks and, you know, a bag <laughs> in the bag. You know, whatever. It was cool. It'd be like, you know, one thirty or something after lunch. And we'd just be like walking around on the roof. <laughs> yeah, for us, so because... And it's not just like the seasons, but school year. Like everything is the opposite over there. So like for us, winter is in July and all that. So we're still in school during what's supposed to be summer. And so it was the World Cup was going on. And so my aunt would come into class and be like, hey, you know, do you want to like just go home and go watch the game? Or you can stay at school, whichever. I'm like, oh, no. I'm going I'm home. Definitely gonna go home. the fuck home. <laughs> you asked me. You, I like. I don't. I mean, I. I will watch soccer, but I'm not like a. Like I wasn't gonna die if I didn't see the game. Right. But if you're gonna give me the option. Oh, of course. Of going home and eating some of my grandmother's food. Yeah. And not be in school. Yeah. Take it. Yeah. My grandma would whoop my ass <laughs> if I came. Where are you in school? You want what? You want some grandma food? No. So my mom was my sixth grade teacher. If I missed the bus, I had to ride with her. Ooh. Uh. That was, that was something. I didn't like riding to school with my mom. You no, know, I'd much rather ride the bus. Get your morning started. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, stand outside, catch this big, big old bus, and then like ride the last 20 minutes to school because I was the last person on the route. <laughs> so I get on the bus and there's no seats. You know, the whole like cliche scenario every day. Damn. It's all right. It works. I'm done with it. it. Yeah. My my middle and high school experience was very unique. Yeah. <laughs> I wish my fucking a lot of family. Was a fucking principal. Nah, it, it, I mean, <laughs> that that was about the coolest part, though. I promise, because he. I mean, like I was I was an, an example because he busted my ass a few times, and he was like, "Listen, y'all." It's my grandson. I just whipped his ass. What do you think I'm gonna do to you? <laughs> Get y'all, motherfuckers! Don't step out of line. No, that's that's a joke. But he was very stern. Like I had, I was, you know, I had to be an example of how to behave. So when I when I screwed up, I was punished appropriately. So you know, like I didn't get any special treatment on that front at oh. all. So it was pretty fair. Gotcha. Had to be. <laughs> yeah. It had to be. So what's uh, what's next for you in Knoxville? Where are you trying to play? What's uh, what's on the radar? Man, have so you been to a lot of venues yet? I've been to a couple. I, I mean, I just finished up a podcast. I was the musical entertainment for Knox Brew uh, Stories. Um, I performed two songs uh, on their podcast, and they asked me just a little bit of questions. I was mostly there just for like a musical break. Um, but I've got that place lined up if, or when I'm ready. Uh, I know Barley's is a place I want to look at, Jig and Reel downtown in Old Town. Um, there was a couple of places I saw today up and down Kingston, like you were talking mm. about too. Like there's a shit ton of places that have live music and it's finally coming back. 
I know. saw live music at our Charlie's the other day. Oh, Charlie's? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shit. They got live music on the patio. What? Where? Which? Oh, Charlie's. The, the one on Kingston. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> if you're looking for a spot, I don't know who you contact. <laughs> you just like walk up to the bar and be like, "Hey, like, is who's in line for that?" And just point on the stage. <laughs> got a good door. <laughs> Let me use your... Then they just plug straight into the PA, it looks like. I wouldn't be surprised, so they're playing all over the room. But everywhere. Other than, oh, Charlie's, <laughs> I was thinking, like, Hay Bear Cafe. Um, it's out on Middlebrook. Yeah, that place is pretty slick. I like it. I want to hit up a couple of these breweries, too. I want to um, try to figure out places to get to Asheville, because I've been to Asheville twice since I've uh, been here, but... Like, the drive out there is really great. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went out there, like, there's this great venue I want to reach out to. I think it's called the Pink Rabbit or the White Rabbit. One or the two. I think it's the White Rabbit. Uh, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, don't quote. It, either or. A something Rabbit. Rabbit, Asheville, North Carolina. Um, yeah, man. I've got, I got places I can contact and drive back to Nashville. I had a show um, back at... Um, I can't even remember. It was after Columbia. Is that August? Mm hmm I went back and did a songwriter's round in Nashville, in Franklin. Damn, what's that fucker's place's name? I'd have to look on my phone. That's cheating, though. No. That's, <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> That's cheating, though. The suds and the buds are kicking in. So how was that? How was that songwriting thing that you, that you just mentioned, like the, that event, that songwriters thing? Oh, it went actually great. I played in front of people I didn't. No. I didn't even. Uh, I've never played in front of before. I've got invited back, so I know I can contact them and have a place right there ready to go. Um, since the Christmas bombing last year on Broadway and Second Avenue in Nashville, a lot of uh, the buildings that I used to play at are gone now but they just opened up a three-story taco bell <laughs> on second avenue serving alcohol so i'm gonna have three five Fuck. layers burritos and a margarita and i'm gonna play taco fucking bell <laughs> uh, they I have live music in a taco bell yes that's amazing they sell alcohol of course they're gonna sell I mean, well, yeah, it's play. a Taco Bell downtown Nashville <laughs> yeah. on Second Avenue. You're on the river. Hell You're yeah. Getting wet. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I mean, I can contact the basement and the basement east. I've played there. Um, the Cobra in East Nash, I could play there. Um, I mean, I can go all the way back to Texas. Uh, I've got places I need to contact, but I just. Like, I worked my ass off during the pandemic trying to create new material, and now I've, hopefully I'm following the right type of example where I capitalize on what I'm doing in some sort of way with having material to continue, continuously release. Because I don't want there to be, like, I just want to keep giving everybody songs. And eventually, something will happen. Main pop, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Is there a certain way you like to write your songs? Do you have like a, a ritual or anything to get into the headspace, or do you just like as they come to you naturally? I'm usually, I'm always by myself. It's always just me. Um, and since being in Knoxville, I mean, we've got an office space, but it's usually me in the garage. And when I get some type of chord progression in my head, I literally just figure out the strumming pattern or how I'm wanting the song to go and then I'll start to hum or just random words spit out and it's just me playing the same thing over and over again freestyling different takes but rec either recording it or writing it down and then once I think I have a great structure of lines I'll go back and tighten up the music itself and then from the lines I've got written down, like I puzzle it in because some stuff just it doesn't sound right, but it's just 
the original shit that just comes out. But right. I have to make sure I get every take, whether it's bullshit or good, because, oh man, by that time, I'm pretty high. Because I'm, my, like you said, you asked about a ritual, like, I'll get in the garage, um, make sure I'm by myself. I may have one light on, or I'll play in the dark, but <clears throat> I'll have a pack of smokes. I'll have a blunt or two joints rolled up. Um, it's like my me time. Like, everyone wakes up in the morning and go jogging or... Like, they've got their way of cope, coping. And, like, since I hopped off all the hard substances, like, and really started chasing my music, like, music took place of all of that. So I'm not as bad as I once was. And she never met bad Travis, and I'm glad she didn't because she probably would be sitting here next to me. It's so I've been told. But yeah, for ritual, per like it's use it's just me. Like I want to be alone in a quiet, dark room. Make sure I have something with me. I'm I'm gonna smoke, and if I'm drinking, I'm definitely smoking. Like, so I mean, I do in that sense. Like I'm I'm there to relax. It's like a long day after work or something. Like I'm there to just fucking chill. Getting a, getting a positive mindset unless I want to write like a sad or crazy song and then on songs like that I will go in there just if I'm crying or boohooing like however I'm feeling I'm not going to try to alter it so I'm not going to go in there and smoke and then just be high and sad or freaking buzzing and sad like that's just it doesn't make sense to me so yeah, I don't want to cloud my judgment I want to capitalize on that emotion as raw as possible so i'll do the same thing i'll just drown everybody out and focus on what i'm mad or sad about and find a, a group of chords and play them in a certain melody or certain way and then yeah just freestyle over and over again and puzzle each little bit that i've recorded or written down into a to a song and it's always come, the music's always come before the lyrics, for me anyway, rather than the poetry I used to write. Like, since learning instruments, instead of lyrics coming out, I find the music first and then just freestyle over it until something positive happens. Is there something that my ear catches? Like, damn, yeah, that's it. And the chorus is usually what... I figure out first because the chorus is going to be repeated throughout the whole song like that's usually the title of the song is spoken or sang into the chorus of the song so I'll figure out the title of the song I'll figure out the chorus and what I'm singing about in the chorus and then if I know what I'm talking about I can build off of that and create a story whether if it's me creating or manifesting one or like from my own experience like okay so I'm feeling this way oh, this is a good part of my life that I could jot down and work with. And yeah, I just structure a body, get a rough draft, tighten it up, repeat, repeat, repeat until it's where my ears like it and rock and rolling. Where, you, where your ears like it? Yeah, my ears, man. I think I've got a pretty good ear. And, I, and I, even through the military, like shooting and seeing all the stuff on deployments and jumping out of airplanes my ear should be shot so you actively ignore me is what i'm hearing right now <sighs> yes and no <laughs> but just no I, love it. I need you to know that that that's not this kind of podcast But no, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I like, I can literally drown everybody out. I could have the TV playing, I could have, like, I can literally, like, cancel sound out and just focus. It's kind of scary. And people are like, Travis, hey, Travis, Travis. And it's not that I can't hear, I'm just not paying attention because it's all muffled and shit in the background and everything I'm hearing or playing is crystal clear in my mind. Cause like I'm that, I guess I'm that focused. It's like some, um, damn, what was that movie when he took the pill? Oh God, the Bradley Cooper movie? Limitless. Yeah. Except I didn't have no pill. I've taken plenty. 
Until's thinking that they were it. Someone told me they were gonna free my mind. And they were right, but it wasn't the right <laughs> simulation I was looking for. It is a badass movie. It is. <laughs> it really is. What's her name again? This pooch here, Decca. Mm. Being a total ham. Ham bone. Mm-hmm. Ham brony. So, uh, you've got your ukulele there. I do, man. You were tuning it and messing around with it a little earlier. It's still there. It's still there. But if I did one, what would I do? Oh, that's going to be really soon. My favorite one has always been um, First Time. That's a song that I wrote in the garage back in Texas about the band that split up. And then I went back home not thinking I was going to do music and then I got back into it and that's what brought me back. Can I sing? I can sing that, I guess. It's out on my, you can find that on Spotify and every musical platform. Um, I use Disco Kit right now, totally independent, so I make sure it's on anyone's preferred music source. So, I mean, simply go to any of those, Tidal, etc., SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Music, Amazon Music, uh, search Weeping Cosmonaut. It was released in uh, my debut EP, Bloody Truth. And this one's called First Time. Um, I wrote it after the band split up because uh, I got lied and betrayed, sort of, kind of. Time wasted that I didn't have. Time to waste. Um, following false promises, sort of, kind of thing. Like a wake up call.
<laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So I didn't mean to force a collaboration with my dog on you like that. Hey man, it was all in, all in fair play. What's up, girl? You up now, huh? <laughs> Music got her on the floor. Dance it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the good ear flop sound right in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, man. So I was mentioning all my. Uh, ways of coping after getting out of the military so like for the first two or three years after the military I was feeling like I needed to catch up on like lost experience or time I guess is the way I put it the, the thought in my head because I got out I served from 2000, November 2006 to September of 2011 um, I got out like I was 22 years old I'm like well shit I'm an old freshman in college I'm 22 years old like my college years were spent in the military. Now my early 20s are going to be like devoted to college, which wasn't a bad thing. Um, so like, I dr started drinking a crap ton. And I mean, it was to drown out a lot of things or just escape pain or escape thoughts. And alcohol's kind of stopped working for me. So I turned into a big rave baby and was called a mule for the longest time and I flopped around raves for like two straight years just bullshitting all over Texas and towards the west coast through New Mexico and Arizona like desert parties and all types of bullshit like Molly Ecstasy I saw a lot of sunrises that way too um, and it was all to just like escape or forget about a problem or a situation that I didn't have the balls to uh, face or want to think about excuse me so I had so many substances to help me escape that pain because I graduated from alcohol to ecstasy and molly and from that to cocaine and freaking cocaine was to me at the time was amazing but now that I look back on it like it was a lot of money wasted just I blew that money literally like it was just stupid um, and then I was like, well, fuck, what do I do besides this? Like, that could do something. And my dumb ass decided one night to just take a little dose of hair on, but I couldn't trust nobody with the needle. And I did it myself and blew out my vein. And my whole arm was like purple for like half a month. It was just nasty and gnarly. And like that, my that right there just ruined the whole experience for me. I believe it. I'm glad it did, cause that's if I'm gonna get hooked or, or addicted on anything, it doesn't need to be fucking hair on. But uh, after that, I'm like, well, shit. I mean, there's more than one form of cocaine. So like, I did, I have smoked crack cocaine through whatever you smoke crack cocaine with. Uh, so that was a failed experience and yeah after that like I got help and went through a lot of programs and really started devoting all my time to writing again and picking up random instruments and trying to learn them and just get my mind elsewhere and just play a shit ton of shows and just tell everybody about my crummy life. And that's your math, your your overall inspiration is being a songwriter and a creative person. I deep down would love to. I want to be a writer. I want to. I want to be a songwriter for sure. Uh, I see myself writing a book eventually. Like, um, I'm sure everybody's got their own story, and I'm sure they're a lot more interested than me. I mean, some are made out of, made into movies or made into, um, good novels. Um, I just figured I could share it my way through a song and use a lot more metaphors that can not just touch on what I was feeling or going through through a moment, but someone in a similar situation, but it also reaches them. Fair. And yeah, this one's called Escape, and um, I'm going to devote this song to a buddy of mine, um, Shion Thorpe, R.I.P., uh, like me and him. We did a lot of cool and illegal things in Nashville, Tennessee. Allegedly. Allegedly. And 
He always told me you gotta escape by any means necessary. And that's with anything, really. You find something, stick with it. Hopefully it's positive. Like, so music took over what I would do for coke or any of those other substances I've mentioned. tried to uh, make it sound that way because uh, yeah music's my escape and it's a lot healthier than uh, what I was doing or what I was slinging what I was around allegedly <laughs> so yeah man escape y'all and y'all can also find that that was released on my uh, EP project uh, Weeping Cosmonaut yeah plug those socials Weeping guys, I'm not, yes, I mean, you can find it on TikTok, uh, not Snapchat yet, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I've got a YouTube channel, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple, I'm on Tidal, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on Google Music, Amazon Music, uh, <laughs> all Napster, the, all, all, of the, all the things, etc. Oh, sweet. Uh, but yeah, man, like, I just appreciate finding uh, local artists and men like yourself that are helping local artists. And like, this is a great outlet. And I'm, I'm glad that I found you for sure, man. Well, one of the things that really sort of ticked me off about the whole pandemic environment we were thrust into is yeah. all of a sudden a lot of the visual artists that, you know, I identify with myself and then... You know, all the people I know that also do, and you know, who would normally be rocking a bunch of f awesome First Friday shows once a month, you know, no longer can do such a thing. Yeah. And, you know, some of those people use that money to pay their bills from time to time, or maybe most of the time. Well, so, where are those, those bills there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I'll be damned. So, I just wanted to give <laughs> people uh, like those people and myself uh, a another platform that was more accessible than um you know via zeros and ones then if, if you can't go down there and look then how else can you get it to them really easily so put it on the internet and that's what we just that's what i decided to do the um, webs, man. yeah man it's it's a great tool i hope to leverage it for for good in this case um 
you know, I, I'm, I feel good about my contribution to the internet with this little program, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I just felt like that would have been a really cool thing that I would have liked to participate in as, as an artist in this community and nobody's really doing it. So I said, screw it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, you won't, you, you'll never know if you don't try. And like that's something that my mom wielded into me. She's like, I don't want you to be scared to leave your hometown. If you want to see the world, I, I don't want you to be too far away. But you're a grown ass man. There's so <laughs> much fucking land out there and stuff you haven't seen. Yeah. Don't be afraid to leave home, because you'll always be able to come back home. Go do what makes you happy, and like. Even with the small things, I'm never going to get my mom to try psychedelics. Or will I? Da, da, da. But I have got her to start smoking the old marijuana. Medicinal reasons only. I mean, she's a stage four survivor of cancer. She's in remission. Freaking, she's done her chemo. She's, she's living. She's not hurting. She's on medication and all that, but... Uh, I mean, well, I'm a definitely a big mama's boy. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm a big mama's boy. No, nah, I'm close to my mama. Shout uh, out, mama. <laughs> Shout mama. out, my mama. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, like I've been, because every time I go home, like, I guess she like lives by, what is it called? Vicariously. Vicariously through me. She's like, so tell me, what's been going on? Going on? Like, I want to hear everything. Tell me everything. Yeah, and every time. I get a thing like this, a podcast or any type of gig. I mean, she's been to numerous gigs when I was gigging and touring in Texas, but since I moved away, she's in town around the time she'll catch one, but she hasn't been able to due to the pandemic. Like, yeah. She would be there though. Like my mom, she, she believes what I'm doing and she's also a writer. She, I mean, she's got three or four typewriters home, but she had, she's been dealing with a lot with cancer and everything. But I'm trying to, it's just her and my dad now, because me, my brother, and my sister, we're all doing our own little thing. So. So real empty nest. Yeah. I'm like, so my parents, this yeah. time is you and dad, like, find your niche, start ghosting this place, ghost, or pottering, what is it? Sculpting? Potting? Making? Pottery? pottery. Ceramics? Ceramics, yeah. From ghost, you don't get the, you're too young to know ghost. Patrick Patrick Swayze? Swayze. <laughs> Courtney Cox, Ruby Goldberg. I know who those people are. No, it's not Courtney Cox. I fucked that up all the way. It was not Courtney Cox. I forgot the white girl's name. Was it Demi Moore? Correct. Demi Moore. Those aren't even, like, similar people. <laughs> Shh. I'm going to wait. If you talk real low, they won't hear it on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so. Anyways. Anywho. Great movie. Great movie. Good man. <laughs> R.I.P. Patrick. <laughs> well, he had a pancreatic cancer, I think. That's what got him. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a, like, I'm a huge mama's boy. Um, and I don't know what I was going to say after all that. Shizzy, I am. <laughs> and that's yeah, Jared. Oh, man. So how long have you been in Knoxville? Now? Oh God, I've lived I've lived in Knoxville for almost a decade now. Where did you come from? Um, Upper East Tennessee, mm. uh, right on the Virginia line, small county called Hancock, and uh, small town with two stoplights. Graduating <laughs> class of '85, uh, Sneedville, Hancock County High School, the Indians. Woo woo. Yeah, oh, I was a tiger. What were you? Did y'all have the goat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 no. Was it was okay, there a school to, goat? To, to clarify, uh, those are two different things. Oh god! So, Please. Aside, yeah. Aside from the uh, school that my aunt has, my family has a foundation in Colombia, and we're an elementary school. And the mascot in our elementary school is a goat. Her name is Martha. Um, she's a lovely goat. Was this, was, is, is Martha, like, a current thing? Is she still around? Like, she's, yeah, she's living. Okay, cool. I she's... hugged her, like, a month and a half ago. <laughs> no shit. Um, uh, it's, the thing is, the way that it works over there, it, it, 
schooling is completely different. So things like that, like we don't, we may have an emblem or something, but schools, you don't like say like, oh, go whatever, because we don't really. Have, yeah. Like. I don't think many of the schools over there anyways have a mascot or have like a... Well, then how unique to have a goat. Exactly. <laughs> so we, have, we have a life goat named Martha, which is a, coincidentally my mother's name as well. <laughs> Hashtag facts. So, Goodness. That's always fun when my mom goes over and we're like, hey, Ma, go see the other Martha. And it's this lovely goat. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean... In my on school, we weren't anything, so like I'm from that aspect now, but the high school I went down in Miami, I was a barracuda. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. that's, a, that's a pretty gnarly fish you got there. <laughs> I'd be alright with that. I'm not hating it. Hmm. Is it like the fish that ate Nemo's mom? You had to go there? Was it a barracuda? Nemo! I don't know. So I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck in the middle and upset about it. I don't know. It looked... Because barracudas look like saltwater alligator gars. Have you ever seen an alligator gar? A what? Kind of. I'll, 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 I'll go like 75% with that. Sort of, kind of. Are you Googling it? Are no. you going to get on the interwebs? Are you cheating? <laughs> cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. It is the season oh. for pumpkins. It's the season. I've got three of them. Okay, a barracuda them. does not look like an see. alligator gar. It is not what a barracuda looks like. Well, let me see it. <laughs> Prove it now that you got your technology out. I thought we were Quakers. No, we can't be that. There's a microphone between us. Like it's already oh, ruined. Oh, that's ruined. <laughs> it's it's like that's being, ruined. It's like being vegan but still eating the honey. Oh, dude, I'd be. Oh, God, that's why I can't be vegan. I ain't even gonna kid. That is the fish that ate Nemo. It looked just like that big motherfucker right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Google you you did have to go there. What fish ate Nemo's mom? Because Disney was probably precise. Like, look at that stingray. Look at those seahorses. It's like. Helpful tips to learn the underwater sea life. Asking questions about Disney movies. How you, how oh, you educate yourself. Do you know yourself. Easter eggs? It was a barracuda. You do? Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of Easter eggs? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I need to know all about the Easter eggs. How do you... Because I don't get the whole ordeal, but I'm totally intrigued on the concept. Like, I got to rewatch a shit ton of movies, apparently, because I don't understand. And, and what? Yeah. No, oh, I watched a, it was a random YouTube video, it was about Easter eggs. But where, and like... Which and Easter eggs? It was a, a ball, it was, I guess it was the Toy Story ball and another film that was in the background, if you would the, call the, it. The it pizza plant delivery truck runs through the middle of Nemo in the street scene when they're like in the bags rolling across the street to really? fall into the bay. Yeah, it just like zips by. But, you know... If, I don't if, think if, I noticed that one. Yeah, it does. I, that's probably one of my favorites. Man. I love the Pizza Planet. I got a Pizza Planet shirt. I'm all about the Pizza Planet. All right. So do you watch a lot of Marvel stuff? Yeah. What if? Uh, I'm not current on it, but yes. Oh, uh, do you uh, do you have Disney Plus? Yeah, I got it. Okay, if you didn't, I'd be like, give him the login. <laughs> He's cool. Give it to him. He needs no, to see no. what if. It's upstairs. Don't worry. <laughs> Dude, we watched every episode as soon as they came out. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep up. It just don't always happen. Marvel nerd. She's got like this pop collection, and we've got. The whole Marvel Universe. <laughs> you can't say Marvel Universe is pretty big. We're pretty fucking there. We're... No. You've got more pops than we've got books. Oh, that is a lie. Ooh, that's a, that's, that is a that's bold a claim. That's a lie. Half, mm. It's like a two-faced, like a not mirrored at all. Like half of the office is pops, and the other half is plants and books. That's true. So that means it's a quarter books and half pops. It's, no, I have one pop stand. I mean, in the one pop stand, there's like 80 pops, but that's not a lot. Like, relatively to people who, like, collect, collect. Well, there's a huge collector here in, in Knoxville. Knoxville. I forgot his name. Uh, oh, yeah, we're big nerds, too, man. Did you catch the new boss, or, no, the new fucking The Flash 
trailer? No, not yet. Oh, dude, it's badass. Did it come out fandom? Yes. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. So, the new Batman trailer. I saw that one. I, I'm, my body is ready for this movie, despite the controversies it contains. <laughs> this movie yeah. is, is has been problematic from the start for so many reasons, but God, I want it. I don't give a fuck. I'm screaming Team Edward. I don't give a uh, fuck if he's Batman. Let me see it. There's so many different animated I'm, Batmans. I'm like, fine with him being a good Batman. Let's give him a chance to be a good Batman. He gave Ben Affleck and George Clooney a chance, and they were kind of not the best Batmans. I will... Especially George Clooney. Are we arguing about what the best Batman is now? Yeah. Is that what's happening? Because Michael Keaton is Batman. It's either him or Christian Bale. There's fuck the other... I do like Christian Bale. He's a really good Batman. A slightly better Bruce Wayne. Oh, this is the Spider-Man. That's like the Spider-Man issue. Oh, who's it's... a better Peter Parker? Who's a better Spider-Man? Like, come on. Toby Maguire. Oh, ah. no, 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 no. I'm just old. He's the, that's uh, like he sentimental. But that's Spider-Man. what it is. It's sentimental. It's not like his portrayal He'll be of back. both characters. That nostalgia well. train. It is, but... I'm just, I'm glad that you need to admit that, though. Like, it's nostalgia. Well, I just it's said like, Michael Keaton or Christian Bale. I don't no, like I'm talking about Spider-Man. Batman. Ben Fast, like, really I don't like made him. me mad. I didn't like him as Bruce Wayne or Batman. I didn't like him. Either. I thought he was a great Bruce Wayne because I think he's really good at playing rich assholes. You have a point there. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And he is a city boy from Boston. Playing from Gotham, it's a rich boy. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. But that's the only point I got. Like, that's, I don't have an in depth conversation about how Ben Affleck was a great Bruce Wayne. I'm just like, he can do that stereotype real hard. (laughs) (laughs) He's done it in numerous movies. Yeah. You got it there. He, He did get, some good uh, editing in the Zack Snyder cut. Man, yes. That was a great cut, too. Yeah. I uh, love Zack Snyder. Have you seen, was it uh, that Netflix movie he did? Army of the Dead? Yeah, it was really good. Man. I liked it a lot. I did, too. Uh, I also got really nerdy about how they made that particular movie because they used a lot of different filmmaking techniques to create that zombified Las Vegas Strip. If, if you haven't poked your nose into that little idea, you should definitely do that. Well, I want... That just sparks up a whole other topic because, yeah. like, the guy that I use for my photographs for my website... I don't have a website right now. I do have a domain, but I need to pay a bill. <laughs> don't... I know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, weepingcosmonaut.com keep the pill out for it because when it does get back on I'm going to have a crap ton of merch ready to release stickers um, face masks if y'all are pro face masks but we're totally coming out of it but it's already been like ordered so like I don't know what to do except <laughs> offer it yeah you gotta let it you gotta let it fly y'all want it yeah find so, out so yeah uh, stick out for that or look out for that stick out what a, woo, starting words here let me slow down a little bit. Take a breath. And out. Okay. And then I lost the train of thought. We're sticking out Alex. for the new stuff. Oh, yeah, with the, the website. And then I don't know what I was going to say after that. Alex and the projects you've been doing with him. The movies. The films. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was really going that far in. <laughs> That's why you started talking about well, it. Alex... I feel bad now. I'm sorry, Alex. Don't. You know how high I get. So, Alex Bullock, he's a a great videographer. He's got his own photography and videographer company called Film Pilot. He's took my professional shots that I have on all my social media, and I've actually um, helped him with a project that we did for a 48-hour film festival that was out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we did a short film story about this, um, the, the gist of the story is Lost in Time, and we're on a game show in the future, and 
I'm they, here for it. Sold. Yeah, like it's <laughs> sold. It's three thousand and twenty-seven, and it's like Hunger Games bullshit. Like you're getting, you're gonna have to fight for your life to survive and win a prize or win this kind of staple or high status. Well, my character had a daughter who was terminally ill with some type of disease at the time, and he needed money, so he entered the contest solely to um, save his daughter. And they did, like, a psychological test to figure out where would we send him, like, what's his hidden fear, or, like, what's his, what's his crutch, what's yeah. his weak spot. And apparently my character's was, like, a prehistoric time and I was stuck back with the fucking dinosaurs and huge insects and <laughs> I've got to survive 72 hours that's all I've got to do is survive the timeline and come back when mm. it's time but I was given a peel if any time before 72 hours if, I, if something happens or if I give up take the pill and you wake up from this alternate thought or reality of the game so I get bit by this huge prehistoric mosquito or bug and it's like on my back and through foraging for food I lose my first aid kit somehow to treat this I'm there the whole time trying to just push out 72 hours but I'm probably gonna die from this insect and then I'll never make it back to my daughter but if I take the pill and get back we won't have the money and my daughter will die anyway. So, and we like <laughs> cut it and set it for a huge kind of other type of movie that may or may not happen. It was just, we had 48 hours from entry because it was a random um, genre pool. Like <laughs> you, you sign up and everything and you have to go the first day and each director of the project, there was like 45 other um, projects like, one person got fantasy western. Hell yeah. The other got, like, Christmas musical. Like, just uh, musical horror. Um, and we got future... Um, damn, what future adventure? Future adventure. So, like, we, we... You can either use one or the other, or you can combine them. So we did, like, a future adventure thing. Like... We're in the future, and, like, for fun, they have a thing, uh, a, a freaking TV series that you can watch, like, actual people risk their lives. They'll either make it or they won't. You don't know. Just, like, some dark type of futuristic bullshit. Seems very dystopian. I'm here for very, it. Very, man. I'm here for okay. it. It's on YouTube. Um, you, you can look up Alex Bullock. That's B-U-L-L-O-C-K. Uh, I'm pretty. It would be on his channel, I'm sure. Um, I also have shared it on my social media outlets as well. Um, we're doing one for Halloween this year, and the day of shooting is October 24th. Um, it's going to be another short film. Um, we're doing a Halloween theme, and this isn't for no contest. Uh, we've got plenty of time, so we've rode out. Uh, well, it's not a lot of um, scripted words. Like, it's just actions and everything. Like, there's going to be a lot of fight scenes, a lot of gore because we're killing zombies. Um, Pow is probably going to be an extra zombie in that part. I said that if I would only be in the movie if I got to, like, bite him or, like, hit him in ah, some way. Ah. Like, so then I was casted as an extra zombie. So how, in what way does she inflict damage upon you in this film? She definitely, <laughs> she's definitely going to get a hit because like, but I don't want to give too much away since it isn't released yet. That's fair. Yeah. But y'all get a fight. Yeah, there's going to be a part where we <laughs> have an interaction. <laughs> but it's not just her as a zombie and it's like one guy versus several. So there's going to be some that just... Like real quick, that's all I can. That's all I say. <laughs> yeah. But Alex Bullock, film pilot, um, great photographer, great videographer. Um, great he's person. Me. Yeah, he's a great person too. Great guy, really is. 
Um, he offers a lot of different services and very talented. He's got a lot of equipment. He's got a professional office space now off of Sutherland Avenue. Nice. He's set up. Good. He's um, the one that helped me with um, my single Bloody Truth, which is a song about my uh, cocaine addiction. And he shot the music video for me that's out on YouTube. You can find that on my Weeping Cosmonaut channel. Or you can simply type in Alex Bullock, uh, Bloody Truth. Um, he's also going to be the one that helps me shoot a music video for Don't Count Me Out since we're doing a remastering, re-release. Um, he's going to help me with a video for the yellow card cover. He shot me and Mike actually working on it in the studio, so... It's a little bit of mic behind the computer and the board, and then it the screenshots jump from me behind the mic in the vocal booth. It's like a real, it's right there, recorded live studio session. Nice. Release that for some content. And yeah, from, I mean, I've got all this content to play, and I'm capable of playing from anywhere from like and 45 minutes to two hours. Um, so like all this new material out I've got to push it and that's how I'm going to start hitting up venues since things are starting to open up man and hopefully jump out in Knoxville and help the scene and explore it have fun and meet meet new artists and find people like you yeah. like yeah, there's there's plenty of good uh, all sorts of artists out there but Knoxville is a big music hub so I'm sure you'll find some people that you jive with pretty well I'd be problem. surprised if you didn't I'll say that yeah, like uh, that's what everyone keeps saying. They're like, just, just on the whim. Like, have you ever done street performing? I'm like, well, yeah, I did that in Nashville. I did that on Broadway and Second Avenue, and I did it in Dallas a lot. Um, but they're like, yeah, busking. You don't have to worry about like a music permit or anything or some type of thing you got to file with the local courthouse because like in Dallas you got to have a permit to be a street performer and like be soliciting on. Yeah. The side, like, but here it's absolutely free. Uh, unless you use amplification, I think. And yeah, then, I think then you, you need are a permit. Right. But I, like, I think Knoxville's one of the few cities because Nashville, I mean, it is Music City, but shortly before I left, they finally started requesting that you get like a license or a permit to do it because tourism was taken over majorly in Nashville and. I mean, they wanted sidewalks cleared. They didn't want one corner squashed with the street performers. Yeah. They needed people to keep going so they get money, money, money. Sad, but yeah. Yeah, man. I'm like, Phew. Yeah, I mean, uh, Market Square, Crutch Park, uh, those are a lot of places you'll see people busk, like uh, up and down Gay Street sometimes, you know, downtown. I ain't scared of it. I've done it. So if you do hear this, you may or may not see me there. Um, I did one 30-minute busking routine in um, Graffiti Alley down there on the square. Nice. But, I mean, at the time it was shortly, uh, well, not shortly, it was while I was with Alex for the photo shoot. Like, we just busted down, and he's like, just start playing. And I set out my case, and there was a ton of people to come by, but, I mean, I got to play down there. And people said they liked it, but nothing really came from it. Got some great shots. They wanted to like see it, see me in action. So it's like kind of a spontaneous little. He just said play until I tell you to stop. And he had his GoPro and his Canon handheld camera going. But I'm hoping to explore a lot more. Like, cause I finished with the Knox Brew stories. And I'm here talking with you today. I'm going to have... Do, I don't even know the name of the venue. But it's on Martin Luther King Highway. It's a Halloween show. Um, you may know it. I'm going to cheat. Alright, well, it's relevant. Go for it. I'm cheating. That's alright. It's a responsible use of information. Or at least I feel as if it is. Unlike my search for Barracuda. 
Um, I wasn't aware of my opinion of making such calls <laughs> at that time, so you can't retroactively apply this to that moment. <laughs> I didn't have the presence of being then that I have now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Decca didn't get up and like bounce around during the second song. <laughs> I fully expected her to do such. Yeah, like you didn't notice her, but she was all curled up and then she started slowly like staring at you. And that's when she decided to get down and shake and go drink water and Oh no, for real? Yeah, she straight up went over to her her, uh, her kennel over there and was just like, drink, 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 drink. <laughs> so I went and poked her butt. So she, <laughs> <didn't stop. laughs> she uh, she likes to make her presence be known, one way one way or the other. She's a goober of a dog, and I love her. I was told this dog was going to be a, a, a Mastiff mix dog, and I was like, all right, cool, big dog. Yeah, sweet. Like, that is a 120 pound dog. Mastiff. Right. So I got this nice 40 pound dog here. <laughs> She's a great dog, but 30% the dog I thought she was going to be. <laughs> Swear to you. Oh, but her personality's probably. Oh, she's, you know, bombastic personality. She's, <laughs> she's a, a goober. But, yeah, she's great. Just not the dog I thought I was going to get. <laughs> so it's like two years into having her. I was like, it's yeah. It's still not growing. It's like, this ain't. Hmm. That ain't going to be how it is forever, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen pictures of her siblings, too. They're also not. <laughs> they're also yeah, not Mastiff mix, no. So they, that's just how they like advertised kind of thing but. well i mean i i'm uh, it wasn't really advertised it was hey this person i know had some puppies maybe this uh, so it wasn't like i didn't get no papers with this dog you know i oh, know that would have been really bad if it had been that <laughs> right. she was like not grown but um but yeah i still, just i just picked thought. up this dog that that was the impression i was given i didn't really trust it too much <laughs> but that's what I was told. But hoped for. Uh, secretly, deep down, <laughs> after I voiced it myself, I was just like, "Yeah, I, I want a big dog." So now I'm happy I don't have a big dog. Uh, I don't think I'd want a dog that weighs like nothing more than seventy-five pounds. That's a <laughs> that's a big animal. We have our pit bull weighs seventy-six, seventy-eight-ish, and then our blue tick is mid 80s those big dogs in my opinion so we have <laughs> big dogs and then uh i like big dogs have... i just don't want to have one. Oh, they're i don't know if we like planned on having big i mean i've lo i love pit bulls and in my opinion they're like one of the best sweetest lap dogs they certainly can be for sure and uh so i've always wanted one to kind of be like okay well, i mean i'm gonna have a big dog although technically right with pit bulls is they weigh a lot but they're not yeah they're like, dense tall. they're like, super they dense just, exactly like it's it comes from muscle not from literally like height or whatever whereas your blue tech he's super skinny he's just like a big dog yeah and then we have my brother's dog who probably weighs around like 80 something he's a shepherd something i mean this is he's tall he's huge like i'm not that tall so i'm like five feet flat and he on his hind legs is almost my height. He's a huge dog. That's also a big dog. See, I I love big dogs. I like dogs That's in right. general. But I, I just like I I thought it'd be cool to have a dog that would like be the same size as me and I'd have to share the couch <laughs> and it'd be cool. Oh no. Nah. Mm -mm. I, I'm happy I avoided that. <laughs> I I dodged a bullet on that one. Yeah, they're I mean they're great, but sometimes it's it's too much. And then we have our little Beagle Blue Healer Max, who does weigh like 60-something, but that's just because he's chunky. He should not be weighing that much. But he's so, like our little oh, one. Sorry. Did you find the things? Got it, finally. Hey. <laughs> so, yes, it's 3920 Martin Luther King Avenue, Knoxville, Tennessee. Right now it's called the Meeting House, but they're revamping as they had to take a pause at the beginning of the pandemic, but they just finally started 
production and doing their own thing. Uh, it's great for any type of artist, especially painters and artists as such. Like, but they do have um, obviously a stage for musicians to uh, carry out the vibe. It's um, artists of all kinds is welcome. Uh, they do open mics and other events throughout the week for different genres of art. But um, they're going to be soon known as Fresh Start. And again, the address is 3920 Martin Luther King Avenue in Knoxville, Tennessee. Sweet. I'll be there uh, September 30th. It's for their Halloween weekend. Um, I'm going to play, uh, I believe it's a 30 minute set, but there's about eight other acts so yeah what's the day when are you playing october 30th <laughs> this year yeah october 30th yeah yeah <laughs> you heard it right october 30th thank you <laughs> It's just a 30 minute set and there's going to be eight other acts it's going to be an all day affair all weekend affair um you can find them on facebook of course right now you'd have to search for the meeting house but again they're going to be doing a revamping and being known as the fresh start sounds like a pretty cool spot yeah man i'll have to check it out maybe have those cats on here yeah that'd be cool yeah i mean if they interact with creative people in the community, it seems like a pretty valid guest to have. Yeah, for sure. That'd I mean, smart. I don't... I definitely recommend or maybe introduce Salt Contacts. Yeah. Network. Yeah, we can do a little bit of that. They, I'm sure they would be fun to talk to in some capacity. And <laughs> that that's really kind of the roundabout answer to one of my questions about, you know, who would you like to see or have on the show? Like, what's, who's someone you would listen to? on the podcast so oh, wow. so we've kind of wrapped back around to sort of the end hear, of the list of questions yeah if that's the question is that the question it's the question yeah. okay so who would local well i mean i definitely have to i could see uh you talking to mike nelson um music engineer he's got his own studio he off i mean if you're a musician and you need somewhere to record you can trust this guy because he i mean You'll see ads and stuff all the time, like certified, went to this school for sound engineering and such and such, you're certified. And like he got his training, not just here in uh, Music City, Nashville, um, at Dark Horse, um, I believe that's the name of the school he went to, is Dark Horse Studios. Um, he studied at uh, Juilliard as well. He's a trained cello is upright bass like he's a bass player but at Juilliard he did cello and upright bass so trained musician like he's great a great ear uh, Mike Nelson and then a great artist for photography I mean he even dabbles in um, animation and um, drawing and painting because he's got a mural down on um, Graffiti Alley um, his Alex Bullock uh, the owner of uh, Film Pilot, videography, photography, drawing and illustrating. He's a very talented artist as well. And then my buddy Andy. I don't even know Andy's last name though. That's he. He is a great <laughs> musician. Um, that's what I can say. I wish I knew his damn. What's his SoundCloud? I can share his SoundCloud. I gotta cheat yeah, plug, again. Plug his SoundCloud. <laughs> oh, so off to the interwebs to fetch to fetch identifiable information. If I had an appropriate uh, sound effect to play right now, I would <laughs> I would play it. But um, I don't know if I do. So I'm just going to awkwardly talk through this so it's not totally silent like I really know what I'm doing about it. But really I'm just sitting here petting my dog because that's what I'm actually doing about it. And um, So you have to search Droopface on SoundCloud. Droopface, that's a capital D-R-O-O-P, capital F-A-C-E. Droopface. 
I shit you not. All right. SoundCloud. His name is Andy. He's um, he's a trained, no shit you not, uh, bluegrass banjo player. Mm, that's awesome. <laughs> but he's jumped from, I mean, that's his, he's a, he's a Middle Tennessee country, oh boy, but very open-minded, very now very woke individual um banjo guitar synth like he does everything on the interwebs as well for like producing or figuring out fruity loops like he's very technical too so it's it's really cool he's a humble guy very smart and intelligent uh yeah andy droop face soundcloud that guy yeah, that guy, man. What All right. Love. I think I something think that's different, something weird. That's something. a good bunch. I like weird, man. I like weird is not excluded here. Weird is encouraged. And it's not even like, man, that's fucking weird. Like, damn, they, that's fucking weird. <laughs> like, that's a good. I I mean, I always try to. If I'm labeled weird or different, I'm I'm wearing a smile. Like, oh, thank you. Right. I I I hope I am. I hope I'm being me. I'm not trying to be everybody. Yeah, it's like, uh, whose expectations am I trying to meet today? Right. Mine. Life goals. Mine. Yeah, I, <laughs> getting called weird to your face is just one of those funny things about life experience these days. Man, that's like a, a great chuckle response. <laughs> you're very, <laughs> you're very weird. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> Super dismissive. Whew. Wow. That, <laughs> And then you know after that, nothing you say is going to land in their ears. You got me, Karen. You got me. <laughs> All right, man. So that's generally the last question I ask. And we kind of roundabout got to the answers of most of the things I would have to ask without me blatantly asking. So that was great. I'm really happy about that. Awesome, dude. Yeah. It was fun, dude. Yeah. I enjoy it. I, uh, I appreciate you uh, giving me your time, your energy, the both of you. Uh Thanks for coming to the super secret studio location and uh, doing the thing. So I'm Thomas Zachary. This has been another episode of the KAAMP. Thank y'all for listening. If you wish to support either of these people and myself, you can hit all these socials and buy some tunes uh, or you can buy some art from me and help support the podcast because this is some grassroots shit here and that's how we go. Um, so yeah if you want to support you can donate on anchor you can buy some art you can buy some music there's all kinds of wonderful things in in here that these uh, three people have helped create so awesome go snag something thank y'all for your time and energy y'all have a good day peace